We are back now at 742. Of course, everyone wants a happy marriage, but we all also know that sometimes they simply don't turn out that way. Now new scientific research is raising a shocking question. Are lousy husbands born that way? They are the bad boys. Unfaithful, most likely to divorce, unable to commit, remaining lifelong bachelors. Now a new study suggests blame biology. Researchers out of Sweden looked at more than 500 twins, their genetic makeup and romantic relationships. Those carrying gene number 334, interacting with the hormone vasopressin, fared the worst. Vasopressin receptor 1A gene seems to be associated with how strongly men bond to their partners. Men carrying this gene variant uh, is more likely to have experienced marital crisis during the past year than, than men not carrying it. This so-called monogamy gene seems to affect the way the brain uses the hormone that inspires bonding and commitment. They looked at men because vasopressin plays a larger role in men's brains than women's. Vasopressin is associated not only with feelings of attachment in men, but in other species, in you know, a little prairie vole, the little field mouse, when you inject them with vasopressin, they will begin to set up a territory and defend the female in the territory. That's a human role among men, too. Genetics that may impact whether men get into long-term relationships and stay there, happily ever after. Which begs the big question, will we one day see a kind of marriage-worthy test? I would want to have my mate tested before I was mar married, and I am single, so that would definitely secure my marriage. I wouldn't want to test my mate to see if he had this gene, basically because I feel like our relationship is built on trust, and it's not based on some medical research. Even the researchers admit there's more to monogamy than one gene. They say the science is sound, but environment has a significant impact on behavior as well. Of course, there are many different factors that will influence how happy you are in your relationship, and, and this uh, specific gene will only have a, a small influence on, on the behavior. But researchers hope studies such as these will help unlock the answers not just to romantic relationships, but to such social disorders as autism and social phobia. Well, I think that there's a biological ground to, to almost any, any behavior. It will be very interesting for us to, to, to know more about human nature from a biological point of view. So what does this new discovery mean for your relationship? Laura Berman is a psychotherapist and Dr. Nancy Snyderman is NBC's chief medical editor. Ladies, good morning to both of you. It's not the first time we've sat here and we've talked about the link between biology and behavior, mm -hmm. but by calling this the so-called monogamy gene, Nancy, are we making too much of this? Well, I think it's a bad name, but let me just sort of turn this equation upside down. Let me take you back a few thousands of years when a man needed to procreate to have a large family to take care of him, to make his own armies to have people around him who would protect him. So the idea of one night stands is biologically sort of rooted in our history and makes sense. But as we have proceeded in society and social norms have taken place, perhaps those part of the chromosomes have adapted to what society has expected. So perhaps with this, we're trying to figure out what's wrong T today, instead of saying, have we evolved into something else? But we need to know else. where to put this in the pecking order. Laura, you put it very well to our producer. I'll read it to you and then you can comment <laughs> on it. I would look at this as one factor, a predisposition, not a guarantee. If you have it, it doesn't mean you're definitely a cheater. If you don't have it, it doesn't mean you're not a and cheater. that's really important yeah. because this is just one component to a much larger puzzle. It has to do with whether you were raised in a family where monogamy, where uh, infidelity happened, whether you were socialized to be comfortable expressing emotions because remember this gene really isn't wasn't even specifically about infidelity it was about right. bonding and men who are bonded to their partners of course are going to be less likely to cheat the biggest question is going to be what are we going to do with this information and will there be someday a litmus test no, that you no, know no absolutely nothing I think it is part of the fascinating part of the human right. genome there's no cheek swab out there for you know young <laughs> men nice. who are coming to our daughter's <laughs> door well, would it be nice do you think it would be nice <laughs> You know, I think I think in a way women are scared. You know, this is one of the biggest fears that women have. So the idea that they could know, can I really trust a man? If that was possible, that would be great. The bottom line is that that's not going to give you the answers. And I think we should have to look at biology as a lot more complicated than this man, woman, forever monogamous, live forever. It's yeah. a perfect world in our society. But maybe our genes are telling us something else. And perhaps if you have a dinner table and you have your religion and your culture 
culture and how your parents mm -hmm. raised you, maybe your genes are really sitting at the head spot at that dinner table, and you all have to figure out how you're going to get along. Of course, you have this other option where the men who find out they have this gene can then use it as an excuse right. to be to be unfaithful. And it's a whole it's not other my segment. Fault, baby. It's my but it is fascinating. <laughs> and you know, just like an alcoholism gene, it doesn't mean you're going to grow up to be an alcoholic. But this is a part of the fascinating part of human genome, and we're going to find more and more and more and more. Nancy and Laura, thanks very much. You're Thank welcome, you. Matt. Appreciate it.